Hello and welcome back to the channel, Heir of Carthage here, and it is the weekend and I hope you all are ready for some more changing of the ways of the Oracles of Saints. We're going to continue the campaign. I do want you all to remember, uh, although you're getting this episode relatively fresh on the heels of the first one, I am still under embargoes. We will be for at least a couple more weeks, um, meaning that I'm limited in how much video time I can show you and also in the number of videos and also on the number of turns and I'm allowed to show you. Some people ask me, Air, why do the people who stream the game get so much more time? Well, I imagine it has something to do with streams just being longer format in general, um, but they do get more time and they're allowed more. I, I, maybe I should just stream and, you know, because it's going to upload as a video afterwards, but this is the format that people are used to on my channel, and so I wanted to stick to this. I do like streaming. I do intend to stream this game when the time comes, but um, if I do want to stream and make videos, then I also need to work that out um, specifically with CA so that they adjust the embargo times uh, with me personally, but I just didn't have time for that. Didn't want to mess with it. I also knew how busy I was going to be and needing to record and that it, the schedule just wouldn't work out good right now. Uh, but eventually we'll do it, okay? Anyway, let's get back here. Let's get um, busy with things. I'm going to focus on some growth first. I want to secure this entire province just to pick up some extra income. When we're playing on the very hard difficulty, not only do you find it more difficult to deal with the AI diplomatically speaking, and they get more armies, but you also get less money. Um, so I don't know whether it's because they hit your upkeep harder or whether it's because they just give you less um, money in raw income. I, you would think the raw income would be the same, right? Since they list it on the screen with the buildings, but I don't know for sure. In any case, um, it is what it is. So whenever I was playing this campaign on normal, I had a much larger army and I could easily afford it with this same territory. So they're doing something one way or the other where it is making it difficult to afford more forces. Speaking of forces, these ogres aren't having a problem recruiting stuff. That could get ugly. As Zinch right now, I do not have great weapons to use against ogres. So, can't afford much, but we could probably pay the upkeep on a couple of blue horrors. And that would be some extra fodder and missile damage to help us out in a fight. Let's get down here and take uh, Hellcade Drove. Get rid of this faction, hopefully. Take a look at a few things real quick here in the um, changing of the ways. I have a pretty good number of Grimoire, or Grimoires. I, I think Grimoires. Grimoires, Grimoires, Grimoires. <laughs> I think it's like memoirs, if I if I get it right. I think it's Grimoires. I could be wrong. We can do a transfer settlement. Transfer to the Oracles of Zinch. Let me make sure that that one's in the province that I want. It is, and that is the capital. Let's go ahead and use our changer of ways. I'm pretty sure we can get these guys to hand us this settlement. And it's going to put us on a 10 turn cooldown. Perfect. Thanks for the donation. Influence Appreciate it. Zeintz is, is always appreciative of those who change their ways, both willingly and unwillingly, to support his cause. Let's see, I've got good recruiting up here. There's really no need to focus on recruiting immediately there. I'll just focus on a little bit of growth and income. I'll probably tear that building down later. We don't need it as much. I can now go ahead and dive down here to Hellgate Drove and take their settlement. I'm going to go ahead and auto-resolve this one. I think I could have played it better in person, but oh well. No need to play every single little battle so we can make some progress here. All right. Got an upgrade for Kairos. And with Kairos, I focused a lot on getting his magic up so that we can really bust our way through um, some of the small settlement battles. And that is definitely the case now. Uh, there's a couple of things that I want to focus on next. Um, I'm going to do this inspiring present. And it'd be neat to get some buffs on our horrors. 
It's not going to be much, but the extra barrier and missile strength will make your pink horrors continue to be really useful late into the game. Um, so I do want some of that. We also will want Route Marcher. So there's going to be plenty of things we want to go ahead and get. And then it's Screamers of Zinch, Flamers, Exalted Flamers. I think it's this one right here. Lord of Change, Soul Grinder. One of these, Forsaken is the Ancient Spawn. This one right here is really good because uh, it buffs up our Forsaken and makes them a very nice we offensive tool for us uh, where you don't necessarily just have to be constantly... I'm going to go ahead and get the Disc of Zinch so this guy can fly around the battlefield and be quite a bit more useful. I think we're good now in terms of units. Uh, at least for the moment. I'd like to have a full stack, and we probably can, as long as it's cheap units, but let's um, let's hold off. Go ahead and put some defenses in over here. It's very likely Cathay will move through here and take out this fortress, so I'm reluctant to spend too much, but I've got the uh, favor at the moment, so let's just go for it. You guys want a peace treaty, and I can't agree to that because they still own a settlement, I believe, that is meant to belong to me in this province. We're still picking up more books at a rather good rate, so that's good because we can use that to continue to do the changing of the ways. Oh, this ogre is thrashed. What he's doing in my territory, but um, the challenge stone is the one we need next, and it is owned by his faction. Just curious. We can't use changing of the ways because it'll still be in a cooldown. Are these guys allied with anybody? They're not. Shouting is far more effective. Shouting is far more effective, you say. Well, that does sound like ogre diplomacy. Um. But, you know, then again, I'm not a big fan of diplomacy in general, so... Alright, let's take this guy out. I would expect... Yeah, he's gonna run away. Now, if I auto-resolve this, something tells me they're gonna kill my Furies. Yep. Kinda figured. And, honestly, that's... Not a big deal here, because I'm just gonna recruit some new ones on this turn end. And continue because it'll be faster than trying to replenish those ones anyway. I know. We can recruit some furies locally, and they'll be full strength rather than being thrashed like that. And we got a little bit of books and some extra favor for winning that, so it's never a bad thing. It's like the uh, corn faction may have these guys surrounded. I don't know. We're at war with them regardless, so we'll knock them off of there. It was really nice of them to donate that settlement. I I certainly appreciate them. Go ahead and snag Route Marcher, and then I'm going to do some work on my horrors. Um, since we have a mostly horror-composed army at the moment, it makes sense to buff them up. And honestly, the Horrors are fairly useful units, even later into the game. Uh, just because their missile attack makes them something that I think... I think playing a Zinch, you would want to continue to use missile attacks are powerful, um, both in lower difficulties and in the higher difficulties, so... I feel like it would definitely be something that you want to stay focused on. And you'll notice that I'm just kind of rushing to unlock uh, Vortex spells for our leaders. This is so that we can be very Zinchy, right? Zinch's magic really thrives in the Vortex spells and the massive damage to blobs, and that's where the power of their armies really comes into being. And so in order to really theme this campaign that direction, that's where I'm focusing. All right, Corson here is going to be an auto-resolve. And then I think we'll finally get a battle here at the Ogre Settlement. Um, if he was sieging them, they may be extremely weak. Nope. You know, not taken it, but they were completely sieged out, it looks. And I think now, yeah, we've got a second province secured. And we picked up a whole bunch of books for that as well. Let's check our changing of the ways. I think that we're out of commission on this one for eight more turns. So let's take a look at what is next. Um, we control two entire provinces which from a finance standpoint isn't helping much. Um, but, you know, hey, I'm, I'm trying. Uh, we are at war. 
Not with this faction, because that's an ogre faction. Let's see, here's another Zinch faction up here. What is this type of building? You have a cult. Interesting. I guess I hadn't noticed we could do that. We got a chaos cult in this settlement, so we can get... Basically, why is... So oh, this one, when the winds of magic is strong or higher, you get the Grimoires. This one's just 10 per turn. That one's income. Bolt is destroyed upon building completion. But it would temporarily boost up our magic. Now that's interesting. Um, it doesn't mean that we have to be friends with this faction either. Gallows Tree is where... I was thinking the gallows tree was where... Lake... No, he starts in the sunken sewers. I just know we need to take more territory, and right now, with our current income and army size, busting through the Great Bastion is going to be very difficult. On the normal mode, I was able to kind of sneak through the Great Bastion, have a big enough army. It was no problem. We just started harassing um, Cathay immediately. Um, but that has not been the case. Here with the very high campaign difficulty, it's going to be considerably more difficult uh, to attempt to pull off such a thing. I am going to go ahead and build everything I can to try and make ourselves have a stronger foothold. And I'm going to continue to use the commandments to spread extra zinch corruption and hope that that helps us with the chaos games. So, let's see here. Winds of magic manipulation. We could make the winds of magic lower here and increase it here since we're fighting down here at the moment. Or let's maybe just balance it. Because we could get attacked over here. There we go. So we'll balance the winds of magic. That's a pretty neat mechanic. No one's ever had something quite like that either. Uh, we've got the books at the moment, so I think I'm going to reveal the shroud on this faction, just to get myself some... Just to get myself some, uh... knowledge here. Reveal Shroud. Only Wait a minute. Blood Father. Oh, we just pick him here. My bad. Um, so it's gonna be this faction. Not going to be much to see, I don't think. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to make sure we've got eyes on everything we're potentially up against. And like I said, ogres are going to be a bit of a challenge uh, early on because we don't we don't have any of our anti-large tools up yet. Now, Screamers of Zinch would be a pretty solid anti-large tool. They're a flyer, they're fast. They're weak in terms of, like, hit points and armor, but they do have the barrier and they fly and you can cycle charge them into large units and typically pull off some pretty nice damage as long as you don't sit around in a melee for quite too long. Let's go ahead and do this to get some extra control in our provinces. That's usually not a bad thing. Mission issued, maintain control of three provinces. I would certainly like to. If I hit this one, we're going to end up at war with um, some dwarves and also some extra ogres. I'm kind of thinking about... I mean, we might as well take this one, though, because it's controlled by an enemy. But then I'm thinking about taking full control of um, Kadatha instead. It shall be. Shouldn't be any risk of attack from that direction, so let's move up here. Our income continues to be exceptionally low. Which, like I said, I think is a result of the difficulty settings. Uh, we are ready for some more research. Reveal faction intentions. Now that could be interesting. Let's do this way of scrying. It's going to take four turns. It cost me some grimoires. Um, so let's move on now. And see what we get next. But yeah, we want to get more changing of the ways options because it I mean obviously it's gonna make us more powerful if we can see other factions and tensions we can see behind um, that 
Mission, mission. East. Oh, this was the mission here. Sack arrays, six Kislev Cathay or Empire settlements. Ooh, it's a lot of favor. Um, but it's also difficult for us to pull off right now. Looks like corn is winning the great game at the moment. So we need to make sure we spread more Zenshi corruption. And I'm working on it. I guess that means if I attack another Zinch faction, there'll probably be less Zinch corruption around as well. So maybe I should just stay focused on killing these guys first. This is a walled settlement, and they are attempting to rebuild an army, and I don't want to have to fight a whole other army. It's predicting casualties will be high for us, but watch this. I'm just going to start building siege equipment. I'm going to continue the siege now. They made a change in Warhammer 3 so that sieges didn't have to last quite so long. The enemy will start to suffer casualties near immediately once you surround their settlements, so it forces them to either attack you or quickly be brought to heal, essentially. We're going to need more income. I would like to have all the extra growth, but right now we just we need lots of income. And basically every one of those income buildings we build, it really only helps us afford like one more blue horror. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess we'll take what we can get. We can get a, a cultist of Zinch recruited. Let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and embed that in my army uh, just to see how they perform in combat. I know they'll be useful on the campaign map as well for... Oh, but man, we have to pay the upkeep on it too, which sucks because we don't have a lot. Right, we've got one tower ready. Casualties still say they're going to be high. Um... You know, we haven't attacked a walled settlement, so I'm... I don't really want to attack these guys in a walled settlement, to be honest, because then I'm going to get stuck fighting armored warriors with these guys in the walls, which would just be absolute suicide. So I'm not sure that attacking them um, at the walled settlement is a good decision right now. I do want you all to see what the walled settlement battle is like, and I'm sure we'll have opportunities to do that in this campaign, but I also don't want to commit suicide just to show you all, you know, a certain type of battle. Oh wow, we are facing rebellion there, even with all the uh, benefits. What does my garrison look like here? Not amazing, but it's pretty good. It can hold for a turn or two while we finish up this siege. Alright. Let's end this turn. Some Zinch rebels popped up over there. guys want to pay us for military access i sure maybe they'll go attack cafe or something i don't really have a worry at the moment of them coming in and snatching up my settlements so all right we've got our towers now thing is i don't really want to fight with towers let's go ahead and um continue the siege for one more turn Wear these guys down just a little more. Um, I serve those only the screamers. <laughs> All right, we're up to full strength at our garrison now. We got four pink horrors and a bunch of blue horrors, a couple forsaken, single fury, and then we'd have access to towers. It's a walled settlement as well, so hopefully we would be in good shape there. Go ahead with defenses first so we can keep ourselves safe and improve the growth here. I'm going to mix the income buildings in with the uh, growth specific ones. It's like I've leveled this settlement up so we can build more here and unlock the recruitment of cultist and eventually a lord of change. This one would eventually unlock soul grinders, but this is what we want right here, especially since we're facing ogres. We need the spark because that's going to open screamers of Zinj and then flamers of Zinj and flamers of Zinj cause immense damage. Um, they're a short-range, relatively high-risk missile unit. They cause tremendous damage. And then this one's going to unlock Exalted Pink Horrors, the Iridescent Horror Metal, and the Iridescent Horror Zinch. Um, so these are also going to be good buildings to go ahead and build. And this one unlocks the Spawn of Zinch. Not that we can afford any of that stuff right now, but being able to have access to it is still a small victory in and of itself. Let our guy move up here. We'll embed him in the army prior to attempting to take this settlement. So, cultists are not particularly great in melee. 
they do have some abilities that can be handy um, in combat. Faction destroyed. Still managing to pull in a little bit of income. It's not great. If we're fighting, it's going to be much better. Kairos now has the cultist. We finished opening up a new ability for the changing of the ways, so that is good. Income from settlement buildings, plus 25%. Now, that would be helpful right now because we don't have a lot of income. <laughs> so, let's, let's go down that route. This was required. It's now projecting low losses. Um, honestly, I'm projecting that we take some pretty significant losses if I fight this manually, but I do want you all to see it. So let's go ahead and fight it. You can see the uh, towers and stuff. All right, folks, my pastel legions are approaching the Cornish settlement here. You can see Goraemon has arrayed his legions of corn to oppose us, and some of these units are going to be a little bit dangerous. Like these Chaos Warriors of corn, these are tough units, well shielded, well armored, and uh, we're going to have to use our magic to its best advantage. So I've gone ahead and run um, Kairos and his iridescent horror, and then I'm also bringing in the screaming or the uh, yeah the burning chariot. I think is what the name of it is. It does really good missile damage. It's very limited on ammunition. Um, but I've used it. Now you can see I've actually led my Zinchian Towers with a bunch of blue and pink horrors. And basically I'm trying to soften up everything on the walls. You can see my awesome Zinchi Towers here with their beautiful feathers. So it is quite the sight here to behold, folks. Very, very beautiful. Korn summons some blood letters, but rather than leaving them to fight, he's trying to run them inside the settlement for extra garrison. The AI does this sometimes, and it's a foolish decision. I'm sending my Furies in here to take out a piercing tower that's back there in the background. In the meantime, I'm doing as much damage as I can with my Flyers, kind of getting set up in a position to support my troops who are about to assault the wall. You can see that our pink and blue horrors um, really softening up the defenders as well as my Chariot. You can see the Chariot causes massive damage with its missile. I'm going to move it into position to try and get a long way shot. And um, I'm going to use a spell here. This is going to be Zincha's Treason. And I'm going to overcast it, so it'll take away minus 17 leadership and minus 24 melee attack while it's active. It's a really cool effect look there, too. So I'm going to basically try and nerf the crap out of these Chaos Warriors while I continue to unleash Unholy Missile Heck. And then while their leadership's low, I'm charging in with Kairos, who causes terror and helps in the melee. So you can see we actually busted the uh, Cornish Legions there on the walls much better than I thought we would. I got our iridescent horror here. Oh my gosh, this game looks so good. It made so many visual improvements. <laughs> Textures, background, skybox. It is absolutely beautiful. I've got a ram working the gates. It should be open soon. I'm gonna use Kairos to continue to harass enemy troops. Try and set up a blob here so that I can use uh, his abilities, um, his magic, basically the, I think it's the infernal gateway is the spell that I'm going to use here. I'm, Zinch's Firestorm is less predictable, but it's really good if the enemy blobs without you being near them. At the moment, though, this Infernal Gateway is going to be great. So you can see Kairos there absolutely destroying the Legions of Corn. Let me give you all a view here so you can see the health bars and the power bar. So we are just smashing our way through at the moment. He did do another summon here, but the, again, rather than actually fighting, which they should, because these blood letters would do well against all my horrors, they're not. Um, so it's kind of a mess. Uh, there is another tower that's about to pop up. I'll take my furies to that. The gate was broken. It took me a second to realize it in the battle because I was paying attention elsewhere, just really focusing, cleaning up this infantry in the walls, and then trying to keep my units safe here. At this point, I realize that the uh, enemy leaders are over here. It's a couple of um, Blood Reapers. And I'm going to start just unleashing magic missiles. This is something that Zinch can do. You can cast magic missiles at a very high rate. And um, they're not made for a infantry-sized target, but they do damage. And in these type of numbers, they're going to be brutal. So just watch this as I unleash volley after volley of magic missiles. 
on the Blood Reaper, and you can see his hit points just dropping. See how quickly I can cast that? It's, it's about every five seconds. Both my characters can put out the magic missiles. I don't know why I went into slow-mo there. So that Blood Reaper is in some serious trouble. And with the Blood Reaper going down, there is one more over here in this fight. But with them going down, <clears throat> Korn's really got nothing to hold together their leadership. So we effectively broke the infantry on the walls. See, he's now crumbling, falling apart. And my units are now pushing through the gates. I've got Blue Horrors headed in. I sent my cultist um, to climb the tower. And then I've got some Forsaken um, still on the walls from their fighting. They're going to move down here. My Forsaken will actually be pretty darn good in combat against Blood Letters. They'll do okay against the Chaos Warriors, but definitely good against the Blood Letters because the Blood Letters don't have the armor to resist the damage. See here, I'm trying to move my Soul Grinder in as well. Corn uh, is all but defeated at this point, though. There's really nothing left. I dropped another Infernal Gateway on their reinforcements, so it's going to be difficult for them to reinforce when their souls are being sucked into another dimension, which is how I prefer Corn Legions. And at this point, the Burning Chariot is quite good in, in a melee, and Corn is defeated. Their units fall apart, and we gain ourselves a solid victory. That went very well for us. Very successful battle. Uh, the, the magic power of Zinch, I guess even I underestimated it. I forget like how many times you can use the bombardments on the enemy lords, or the magic missiles, I should say. And then of course the uh, the treason of Zinch being able to hit melee defense as well as leadership. I mean, Zinch has some obscenely powerful magic and right there we were able to take advantage of it and really put a hurt not on a corn garrison that we expected to win, but one that I expected could actually cause quite a bit more damage to us. That is going to be the end of that faction opposing us. We're in control of another capital here. So we can go ahead and um, put in some growth. And let's see about Kairos' abilities. Changing of the ways, cost reduction, ambush chance success. We are going to probably be doing a fair bit of ambushing. Changing of the ways cooldown. Now that actually would be really powerful right there. Very powerful. Um, right now, though, I need to make my infantry units stronger. Um, and I feel like that we can afford to do so. Hidden in time. Makes him unspottable. Now that would be pretty neat. We're not fighting a lot of Nurglish factions right now. Let's, um... Melee attack for Furies. Screamers. We don't want to focus on that one yet. Let's go with some, uh, some good missile buffing here. Or actually, hang on. Check up here first. This one gives um, Kairos a very strong ward save for a short period of time. And... 40% barrier for him during battles. That's huge. Reducing base miscast chance. That's also pretty big. Reduction of barrier replenishment delay. Barrier for lords of change in that army. Barrier during battles. Mastery of the elemental winds for iridescent horrors. I mean, these are pretty cool, but I don't know that I'm... Hugely dependent on all of them. I think I'm going to grab this Oracle of Eternity. And then I'm going to start maybe putting some points. Um, putting some points in some of these units in here. Then start buffing up our horrors. See if we can get them to cause some extra damage. Alright, our Iridescent Horror continues to level up. And now he should be able to unleash the Infernal Gateway as well. So we've got double gateway... That could be really sweet. Good abilities here. This is a lore of fire caster, which could be really handy. Yeah, look here, summons a lord of change. And then this one summons pink horrors. That's pretty sweet. So th this could be some very useful things now. Spread corruption, let's increase mobility. Action, movement range is increased, movement range, but does this... Okay, yeah, so whenever we're in the army like it is, so... Should be able to help us move our armies further. 
can upgrade some of our settlements at the Road of Dam or Road to Damnation. We've got a building upgrade we can build here, which should unlock Flamers of Zinch. Can't really afford them very well right now, but we will see about getting one into the army just as quick as we can because they're short-range missile units, but they cause just horrendous damage uh, to the enemy. Yeah, I say horrendous. It's not horrendous when you're the one dealing it. It's horrendous when you're the one receiving it. I'm going to make friends with those warbands so that hopefully Cathay's got something to think about back there. Even though I can't be there to defend all those settlements. Alright, so let's think about our options here with Fate Weaver. Looks like Nurgle has moved in and gone after the dwarves for me. And Nurgle's start was right over here, I think. And we do hate Nurgle. I mean, that's for the course right now for Zinch. All of these are right along the same road where we could just sling down through here and get our third province. We don't have war with the ogres right now. Let's look at our changing of the ways. We got a good number grimoire or grim grimoires here. Force a rebellion. We keep these guys bogged down. I don't guess this has any um, impacts on us, but we could keep them bogged down over here. I mean, we've got the money to do it. Um, let's reveal faction intentions as well. I don't want to reveal it on these same guys, the Mountaineers. Okay, so they're moving after the Loose Tooth Tribe, so we that's good. So we know they're not interested in us, at least at the moment. They're near our border, but they don't appear to be interested in us. Let's reveal the Shroud on this other faction. So I'm gonna use my Changing of the Ways here. It's gonna cost us some books, but we got books. Let's do it. This is our strength, let's use it. I thought I revealed the shroud on them, but I might have accidentally done it on the pox makers, because now I can see their stuff. No, no, no. It revealed our shroud on them. Okay. They just had an army in the vicinity. I don't know if we can make it all the way to that settlement in one turn. They do have this army they can push up to get in my way. Kind of thinking about moving in an ambush stance here. On. Let me see something. We are at... I don't think we can reach that settlement unless we move further forward. I'm going to move into these woods here. A little further forward. Uh, we're not going to be able to replenish what sucks, but I think we have enough strength. And I'm going to enter an ambush stance. And continue to... Build... One turn until we finish the... Oh, I forgot about the rebellion. Yeah, we might want to go in that rebellion before we get too far down the primrose path here. I'm going to come put an end to this. I don't know if we will need to be there for it. Leave me to my manipulations. See what happens. Right now, they're raiding me. Costs me some pretty precious income because I can't afford to lose much. Good news is, is our control in the reach. Okay, now they sieged us. Okay, we might be able to break it with the settlement the here. Oh, the tome is awaking to too. Me. So it's not going to be long before the portal show up, so... Interesting. We may not want to declare a bunch of new wars then with the uh, portals about to show up because we're not going to have a second army to defend our stuff, unfortunately. It says we are going to lose this with high casualties. I... They do have more pinks than us. We have way more blues. They've got Screamers. I've got Forsaken. And I think my Forsaken would chew on the Screamers pretty good. Let's fight this. I actually think we can win. I mean, worst case scenario, we don't win. And Cairo shows up a turn or two later. Settles it. But I think we could just beat these guys now. They're going to siege us. I could just wait till Cairo shows up to back me up. But if I can win this, it'll free up Cairo to go ahead with something else. Welcome to the Chaos Waste, folks. Holy crap. And they got this stuff looking good. Anyway, here, let's go take a look at the enemy army that we face off against. 
Uh, we outnumber them with blue horrors. They outnumber our pink horrors, uh, but not by a lot. They have several units of screamers. Uh, and then here's their iridescent horror is a metal caster. Mine is a zinch caster. Let's go take a look over here. There's their screamers. Haven't seen these units in action. These are really anti-large units that are real squishy but fast. So I don't really have anything in my army that they're going to be particularly good against. And my Forsaken should actually do well at mopping up those screamers if they charge into melee. My strategy here is going to be pr pretty simple. I'll let you all see my legions. Strategy in this battle is um, kind of inch my way into range and get my pink horrors in range of their blue horrors. My pink horrors have longer range than the blue horrors. This will cause me to start getting the first damage. That will force the enemy forward, and even though they're shorter range, then they will come forward into the range of my blue horrors, which are extremely numerous, at which point they take massive casualties, or at the very least, just lose their bearer immediately. And then they start to fall behind in the missile game, and I win. So that is my objective, and my Forsaken are going to be used to guard against charges from the Screamers, but otherwise this is very much going to be a fight very similar to Empire Total War, where we're going to line up and uh, just duke it out um, from skirmish range rather than worrying about melee. See, we're getting uh, some bombardments there. See, now my pink horrors got into range of their blue horrors first. The AI uh, technically wins this battle if time runs out, so they, they like to camp to start with, but they're not going to sit here and just take this punishment because then they know they'll lose. So now they start to move forward, and let's see if my plan indeed works as intended. So the pink horrors pull their blue horrors forward. My blue horrors are now in firing range and get the first volley, which is going to do just savage damage to their blue horror line. Now that forces their pink horrors forward. And their pink horrors will be focusing on my blue ones, which are the lower priority target. Actually, it looks like they did go for some of my pink horrors. Good for them. That was the right target for the AI. I assume they would shoot at the closest one. But the problem for them is that my blue horrors have already eliminated theirs, and now they can move forward and help me focus down their pink ones. So I did get the first volleys. Now they're getting some volleys, and I'm taking some damage. But you can see that the amount of damage we caused is far more significant. And their pink horrors, while being good quality and in higher number than mine, cannot also face all of the blue horrors I have here. The blue horrors are about to run out of ammunition on my side, but then they can charge into melee. So at this point, I have a very distinct advantage um, on my enemy. And although it said we didn't have a good chance of winning this, you shouldn't always pay too much attention to the auto-resolve. Sometimes it is good, sometimes it is crappy, and you don't want to put too much stock in that. Now here comes the Screamers. One of them is going to attack my Chaos Furies. It's not even technically considered a large target, so they won't get their bonus. Um, the other one's going <clears> to <throat> dive down into melee with some of my pink horrors, and they're going to pay the price for that as my Forsaken of Zinch, or actually they're going to charge my Forsaken. And the Forsaken are going to put down those Screamers pretty quick. At this point, the enemy is in big trouble. My blue horrors are now charging forward into combat. The enemy pinks. And you can see the enemy um, Iridescent Horror here is now under fire from a lot of the, the pinks on my side. So they are definitely in trouble. And then I'm going to move my own caster up. You can see him in the background here. And I'm going to start shooting some magic missiles this way too. But the Iridescent Horror is taking tremendous damage from my pinks. You can see he did shoot at me there. But here comes my magic missiles. So, I mean, just magic everywhere at this point. And uh, now the uh, enemy demons are going to crumble. They can't take the leadership. We've obtained a very solid victory here over the Zinch rebels. In some ways, that almost reminded me of an Empire Total War battle there because we needed to get the first volleys off and then let our firepower do the work. So, yeah, that's kind of funny. Anyway, we won that one um, and got rid of the... Got rid of the... Uh, interlopers there that is good news for us i'm gonna pretty much be done with this episode there's not a whole lot else i'm gonna have time and like my my recording time is limited my time is limited on um like real life because i have to go somewhere here in a little while uh, so sorry that it's not as long as i would like to in the future i would expect these you know to be of anywhere from 45 to an hour in terms of length um, so I will do my best with that. I cannot get to... We are as one. 
I'm gonna go ahead and just move up back into our forest and set up an ambush. Um, we're in good shape. Don't think too terribly much to work about. We're, we're making some income. Our garrisons are fairly decent. Like, they're not amazing, but we should be able to hold stuff off. Finish some important research um, there that gave us a little bit of extra income. So that is very nice. Uh, it was this one right here. So the income from our settlements has increased. I wonder if there's anything else that's going to help with income here. Income from stacking and looting settlements. Growth. Changing of the ways. Let's take a look around at some of these way of time. Improvement costs. Income from all buildings plus 5%. That would be kind of hard to get to, though. Open the gates could be good for siege battles. I don't know if I see any others that are going to immediately be, like, fairly easy and then lots of money for us. Come from raiding. So, yeah, that should be fine for now. Um, in terms of our bolt of change army ability. I like this. Go ahead and research that. Get a hold of that. Sounds like free magic to me. Hope y'all are enjoying the Zinch cinematic campaign. Um, I hadn't had a chance to look at the names for all your characters yet. Um, so I, I do apologize, but I, I did have one that we could use here. Someone has suggested using the name Pinky. Um, and so like Pinky in the brain, I think, because this guy is pink. Um, so we'll, we'll call this guy... Uh, Patchy, Pinky, and he'll be Patchy's personal horror. Oh, we'll, we'll just call it Patchy's horror. If it'll fit. Yeah, there we go. This is Pinky, Patchy's horror, and then we're going to call this guy the brain. So this is the brain. So this will be Pinky and the brain. And uh, we'll have a little bit of fun with that. But like I said, help me come up with more army names, unit names. We got this flaming chariot, you know, the horrors, all that other stuff. You all let me know what you think. I will get caught up on the comments today um, as I have time from the first video and from this one, and then I'll be better prepared for episode three, and I'll get your feedback in there, but don't be afraid to share it. Air of Carthage, signing up for now. I'll see you soon.